In this video, we solve problem 9.10.021 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, 7th edition. We're asked to use the binomial series to find the Maclaurin series for the function, and we're told to use 2n in parentheses factorial over 2 to the n times n factorial for this product, 1 times 3 times 5 all the way down to uh, 2 um, times n minus 1. Um, and then we're given this function. So you can think of this as a binomial expression raised to the um, raised to a certain power. That whenever we have a square root here, you can think of that as an implied index of a two. And we can think of all of this as being raised to the first. Using this property from algebra, we have the nth root of x to the m. That's x to the m over n. So whatever that number is there, it goes in the denominator over here. So this is actually one minus x squared raised to the one half power, but it's in the denominator. So if I bring that up to the numerator, that's a negative one half power. So we're going to use our binomial series to evaluate this. And typically in the binomial series formula, or at least in the Larson and Edwards calculus textbook, um, this exponent is a k. And rather than a negative x squared here, we usually just have a plus x. Yeah, so we could just make a substitution, but I would rather not do that. I would rather talk through the binomial series formula first so that you understand where it comes from. And then we will use that to find the binomial series uh, or use it, we will use that formula that we've derived to find the Maclaurin series for this function. Okay, so let's say we've got a binomial uh, function like this. You've got one plus k, or excuse me, one plus x raised to the k power, and that's your function. And you want to find, this is our f of x. We want to find the Maclaurin series for that. For that function. Well, in order to do that, we need to compute some derivatives. Well, the derivative of x plus one to some power comes from the power rule. We bring the power down and then multiply by a one plus x to the one less power. And if we take the derivative again, we're gonna bring that power down and multiply by one plus x to the one less power. And if we take the derivative again, we're gonna bring that power down and multiply by one plus x to the one less power. I think we can all see what that pattern is. If we're looking for a pattern for the nth derivative, well, it's gonna be this. Um, I guess I forgot to mention, sort of forgot to mention the big picture. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find a Maclaurin series for this function, which means that we're trying to find this series that has this form. This is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f evaluated at x equals zero over n factorial times x minus zero to the nth. So that's the form of the Maclaurin series. The only unknown here is that nth derivative of f at zero. So I just started taking derivatives. Sorry, I should have put this, that in context. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a pattern for the nth derivative of f, and then I want to evaluate it at zero and then substitute in over here. Okay, so let's look at this, this pattern. Well, it looks like I've got uh, one factor here, if that's an n, if this is, or if that's, if that's a one, excuse me, first derivative, I've got one factor. For the second derivative, I've got two factors. For the third derivative, I've got three factors. For the nth derivative, I'm going to have n factors out front. And the question becomes, okay, well, what will those factors actually be? Well, those factors are going to be related to whatever k is, but we'll have, in order to figure out what those factors would be, I need to think about the relationship between this last number and this number. So when I've got the third derivative here, this is a two. When I have a second derivative here, this is a one. And for the first derivative, well, we have, I guess we could say that's a k minus zero. Let's take one more derivative. Let's see if that pattern continues to hold. I think it will. 
So for the fourth derivative, we'll bring that next power down. And so we're going to have four factors for the fourth derivative. And then we're going to have a k minus three here when that is a four. So for the nth derivative, we're going to have n factors. So we'll have k times k minus one times k minus two. And the last factor is n minus this number. And this number is one less than that number. So if this is n, the number that we're subtracting over here is one less than n. So we're subtracting n minus one. And then we're multiplying by x plus or one plus x to the k minus a number. So these all have a one plus x in common, so I can write that down. But I notice that the exponent is changing. When this is a first derivative, I'm subtracting one. When that's a second derivative, I'm subtracting two. When it's a third derivative, I'm subtracting three. When we have a fourth derivative, I'm subtracting four. So it looks like when I have an nth derivative, I'm going to be subtracting n. Okay. Now remember, you can't just plug this in over here. You have to evaluate that at zero. These are numbers. That is the value of that derivative at x equals zero. So those are actual numbers. To find out what those actual numbers are in terms of n, the order of the derivative, we evaluate this at x equals zero. So I've got zero here. And I've got x or k times k minus one times k minus two, all the way down to this. I'll distribute that negative now. So I'll have k minus n minus a negative one is plus one. And then one plus zero is just one. One raised to any power is one. So this is the expression for the nth derivative of this function at zero. Let's make sure it holds for um, n equals zero uh, to infinity. So is this true? when n is equal to one? Well, if n is equal to one, we would just have one factor. So I think, yes. Is it true when n equals two? I think, it, I think that's true. But what about with the zeroth factor? Does it make sense when n equals zero? I guess it doesn't quite make sense when n equals zero. So this is for n equals one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so one plus x raised to the k power can be written this way. It's the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of this nth derivative of f at zero over n factorial times x to the n. So it's f of zero plus f prime of zero times x over one factorial plus f double prime of zero over two factorial times x squared plus f triple prime at zero over three factorial times x cubed plus higher ordered terms. And then we can actually condense all of this into an infinite series because we have a pattern for the nth derivative of f at zero, but only for n equals one and so on. At zero, if I plug in x equals zero over here, I get x or one plus zero, which is one. One raised to any power is gonna be one. So this will be one. So I'll have one plus the rest of the series and the rest of the series can be written this way. The sum as n goes from one to infinity of this expression. And the expression in the numerator is k times k minus one times k minus two. And then we multiply all the way down to k minus n plus one. So that's the binomial series. And I believe this converges um, on the interval from negative one to one. Okay, we didn't prove that here, but I just stated that it was a fact that it's true. Okay, so now we wanna use this to evaluate um, or to find a Maclaurin series for this. So our K is negative one half, and rather than plugging in an, or a positive X here, we're going to substitute a negative X squared. So I'm just making a substitution. I'm 
I'm replacing x with negative x squared. Sorry, I picked up a pen with a red cap. I thought it was going to be red, but apparently I put a red cap on a black Sharpie. There we go, negative x squared. And we're raising this to the negative one half power. So that's our value of k. So we get this. We get one plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of k, which is negative one half times k minus one. Negative one half minus one is negative three halves. And then we multiply by k minus two, we're subtracting one again, so we get negative five halves. And then we'll keep going until eventually we have a negative one half a minus n plus one all over n factorial times x to the n. Okay. Oh, whoops, not x to the n. We're replacing our x with negative x squared. So we substitute that in. Okay, so let's see, what does that do? Okay, now if we want to simplify this, we can write all of these um, with a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this negative n by 2 over 2 and take that 1 and write it as 2 over 2. So I have negative 1 times negative 3 times negative 5. And we keep going and eventually we've got 2 minus 1, which is 1, and we have a minus 2n there. So we have got a negative 2n plus 1 there or one minus two n if you prefer. Did I do that correctly? Hmm, I guess I did, I think it's fine. Okay, and then we've got an n factorial in the denominator. And then over here, I've got a negative x squared raised to the n. So I can think of that as a negative one to the n times an x squared to the n. An x squared to the n is the same as x to the two n. So we've got this. Oops, and I just did the numerators there and I forgot to mention, because I've got n factors here and they all have twos in the denominator, when I split that up, so I'm looking at the numerators here, I need a two to the n in that denominator because I have two or n, or excuse me, the number two as a factor, n times, so that's a two to the n there. Okay, so we've got a negative one to the n times this, and notice that all of these factors are negative. So I can actually factor out a negative one to the n from this because there are actually n factors here and they each have a factor of negative one. So I've got a negative one to the n times one times three times five, all the way through to uh, two n minus one over two to the n times n factorial times negative one to the n this can be written as x to the 2n because you just multiply those exponents. And then negative one to the n times negative one to the n is negative one to the 2n, and 2n is always even. So that's gonna be a one. So we've got this. One times three times five, all the way through to 2n minus one over two to the n times n factorial times x to the 2n. Now, we can't enter it like this. They told us how to simplify this. They said instead of writing 1 times 3 times 5 all the way through down to 2n minus 1, they want us to write that instead of that. They're saying this is actually equal to that, and if we wanted to, we could ex um, explore that. We could plug in values for n and see that we always get the right thing here. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video, but I highly recommend that you do it if you're not 100% sure about that. You should do it at least once. Convince yourself it's true. Um, but I'm just going to substitute this expression for that expression. So 2n quantity factorial over 2 to the n over n factorial. So this becomes this. The numerator is 2 to the n, or excuse me, uh, 2n quantity factorial over 2 to the n times n factorial. That's this. And how do I know? Because they told us. And after they told me a long time ago, when I saw that for the first time, I checked it. 
I checked it out and it, it turns out to work. You should do that for yourself too, if you don't believe. And then now we can think of this as a fraction being divided by this fraction. And then you're just gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So we end up with 2n quantity factorial over uh, 2n times n factorial times one over 2n times n factorial. So we've got two of those, so that's squared times x to the 2n. So this is uh, 2n factorial times x to the 2n over uh, 2 to the n times n factorial squared. And one question might be, one question you might ask yourself is, if I evaluated this at n equals zero, would I get a one? Because then if I, if I do get a one when n equals zero, then I could just write this as a single summation instead of starting my sum at n equals one and having this extra uh, term outside, I could write it as a single sum. When n equals zero here, I have zero factorial, which is one times x to the zero, which is one over two to the zero, which is one times zero factorial, which is one. So I've got one squared and I've got a one times one. So when n equals zero, this expression is equal to one. So this can be written as a single summation, as a sum as n goes from zero to infinity of 2n factorial times x to the 2n over 2n times n factorial squared. And that is the Maclaurin series for the square root of uh, one minus x squared. And we just found that by looking at the Maclaurin series or that binomial series for uh, that the binomial series is a Maclaurin series for a binomial expression. And then we evaluated that at k equals negative one half and replaced the x with a negative x squared. Now, if you're not sure, you can always expand when n equals one, get one, or excuse me, when n equals zero, we get one. When n is equal to one, we would have two factorial times x squared over uh, two times, uh, that's two to the first times one factorial, which is just two squared. So we'd end up with one plus uh, two x squared over four, which is x squared over two. This is the n equals zero term. This is the n equals one term. When n is equal to two, we've got two times two is four factorial over two squared, uh, which is four times two factorial. And that's being squared and we're multiplying by x to the two n, so that's x to the fourth. This is four times three times two times one over four times two times one. So we end up with one half x squared here and a three times x to the fourth, okay. Great. And let's look at what happens when n equals three. You get six factorial there over uh, two cubed, which is eight times three factorial times x to the two times three, so x to the sixth. So this is six times five times four times three, four times three times two times one over eight times three times two times one. So those reduce and the four will reduce with this um, and that. So we can divide out the four and divide out the two. So the eight will reduce. And we just end up with a 15 times x to the sixth. 